Hi everyone, I'm Jason Hayes, and in this video, I'd like to show you how to calculate the volume of a stockpile and create a volume report in Trimble Realworks version 10. So to get started, I want to be in my Home tab. So I'm just going to click on Home, and then I want to bring some points into here using the Scan Explorer tool. So I'm just going to click on Open Scan Explorer. Now I already have points in the project, but this allows me to go in and quickly bring in points from a specific area. I'm just going to show you the list here. I could bring these in from here, or I could also click on the key plan and select points to bring in from there. But in this case, I'm just going to use station one. I'm going to open the extract points tool. The option I'm going to use is a rectangular area. And I'm going to include all of the stations so I get the points from all the scans. And I'm going to tell it to remove any points that are on top of each other. So to get started, I just need to come over here pick the area that I want and because I'm using the rectangular tool I just need to click where I want my rectangle to start and then click again where I want my rectangle to end and I also want to specify a half depth in this case I've chosen 8 meters I'm going to select point right here and I'm not going to get any points past 8 meters from that point I've got a few options for extracting these points I'm just going to send them to Trimble Realworks so if I click create, they'll start to be extracted. Now down here on the right, you can see the progress bar as the points are being extracted. You can see the number of points as they're moving by. And then once they're uh, finished being extracted, over on the left-hand side, you'll get a quick report telling you how many points have been extracted. Just about 4 million. Okay, so now I've got my points in my 3D view of Trimble Realworks. They've come in as a new object. Object 24, which you can see over here in the list window. I'm just going to select my point cloud and then click on the Surfaces tab and choose Volume Calculation. This is going to open the Volume Calculation tool. It's going to show up right over here in the workspace. So now I'm ready to go in and I usually do some cleanup on the point cloud. If I rotate here, you can see some points underneath. There was a lot of water around it when I was scanning. Kind of made it do some crazy stuff. So using the segmentation tool from within the volume calculation tool, I'm just going to segment around those points. I was doing some freehand segmentation. The way I do that is after I click on the first point, I just hold down the shift key. And that allows me to kind of freehand around here. Okay. And then I just double click to end that fence. And then I can click on the N button or the shortcut key of I to keep those points in. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to close the tool. And now I need to go in and define my plane. So this is going to be the position and the direction that the volume is calculated from. So I've got a lot of options, but I'm just going to choose three points to define this plane. I'm going to click on one, two, and three. All right, so that plane looks great. Next, I need to set the resolution. I'm going to put that at 10 centimeters. I just want to make sure that spacing's bigger than my point cloud spacing, which is it's no problem there. And I'm going to click on preview. And there's my volume. So if I turn off the point cloud, you can see these individual cubes. That was at 10 centimeters spacing. And you can see that I've got a volume of 62.28 cubic meters. Got a little bit of negative volume underneath. That's the points that were underneath that plane that I defined. Click report. That'll give me the quick preview of the volume calculation report. So this uh, preview shows you a little bit of general information about how the volume is calculated. Then it also shows you the information about the actual volumes and some info about the areas. Now if I click on save as RTF, it's going to save this as a rich text file format. Just need to give it a name. Select a location, so location looks fine, and then go ahead and click Save. And then once the file's saved, it opens inside of Microsoft Word, which allows me to go in and do any kind of edits I want. I can go and change the name, for example. I could change the project name, change the fonts. Um, and then down here is the same information you just saw in the preview. And I've got a little blank area down here. Now, we could just leave it like this, but I could uh, spice up that blank area 
maybe put in uh, an image. So let's just close this tool. All right, so now I need to just uh, position the point cloud so that it looks nice. In fact, maybe I don't even want the point cloud. We might just do the volume, those cubes. That looks a little bit better. And then I'm just going to position it so that it looks good. Clear what's going on. All right. That looks good. So then under the Media tab, I'm going to select this option, Capture Screen. I'm just going to click on there. It's going to do a quick save. I just need to give the name to it. Stockpile image. I'm just going to put it in the same location as the stockpile report. And then now, I'm just going to go back and click on Insert Picture in Microsoft Word. Browse to that same image. Just going to select that. Probably should have had my cursor in the right spot. I'm just going to drag it down to the bottom of the page there. All right. And there it is. A fairly nice looking volume calculation report. Okay, so that went pretty well, and that's really all there is to it. But maybe you have a more difficult scenario. Um, maybe you have a point cloud that has some holes in it because there were some obstructions or something. What would you do in that case? Well, let's take a quick look at how we would take care of that. So to do that, I'm just going to create some holes in my point cloud. I'm just using the segmentation tool. I'm just going to cut this area out. All right, that looks great. And voila, I've got a point cloud with a hole in it. Now, what I would want to do is create a surface from this. So I'm just going to select this point cloud, and then from the Surfaces tab, I'm going to select the option Mesh Creation. And then the steps are pretty much the same. I'm going to go in and use the Segmentation tool to quickly clean up the point cloud, getting rid of any noise points. Missed a few, I'm just going to zoom in here. Okay, and now I want to uh, just close this tool and then select sampling. I'm going to choose random sampling and I just want to move this slider to remove most of the points. I just don't want a lot of polygons in the surface. Um, it's just really unnecessary. So to define the projection for this surface, I'm just going to select three points. This is very similar to defining the plane that we did for the volume a minute ago. So I picked three points. Okay. And then I want to make sure Remove Discontinuities is not selected. And I can just click on Preview, and there's my surface. If I turn off the point cloud, you can see the surface. And it's filled in this area uh, where I had removed the points. So I just click Create. And now I can use this surface to calculate the volume, just like I did with the point clouds. So I'm just opening the volume calculation tool again. Um, let's just change the position of this plane, see how it looks. I'm just going to click there. There's that. Let's see if picking three points looks any better. One, two, three. That'll work. And let's see how the preview looks. Turn up the point cloud. And there's our volume. It's about the same as last time. Slightly different, but we also selected a different area. Okay, one more scenario. You've got a scan before the stockpile and then a scan afterwards. In this case, I've created a surface for both. I just need to select them both. Click on one, hold control, click the second, and then open the volume calculation tool. Okay, so in this case, the position of the plane isn't really important because I'm in fact calculating the volume from one surface to the other. So I could put this plane wherever I want it. It's not going to change the volume. Now what I do want to pay attention to is which surface is which. So in step three, the reference is the red surface. That's going to be the one I'm calculating the volume from. And the comparison is the green. Now if they were wrong, I could click on that little red-green button to switch them. All right, so here's our preview, and there's our volume. And if I turn off the two surfaces, there you can see the volume again. And that's really all there is to calculating the volume with two different surfaces. I hope you found this informative, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video on calculating volumes inside Trimble RealWorks.